So today we'll be looking at the peripheral nerve examinations, which will comprise the examinations of the medial nerve, ulnar nerve, and radial nerve. So the patient can come with a complaint of weakness over the hand or loss of a motor function over the hand, which will require you to perform an uh, examination. And at the end of the examination, you'll be able to pinpoint the nerve which is involved and the level of the lesion which is also involved. So prior to that, first position the patient. So what do we do? We have to sit in front of the patient. And since this will be involving the examinations of the hands, forearm and heart, so we will position the patient in a way where we give him a pillow where he can rest his forearm over it. And ideally, ideally you would want to expose the patient umbilicus above. Okay, so uh, this the reaction behind that is to see if there's a wasting of latissimus dorsi muscle. Because latissimus dorsi muscle is supplied by the nerve roots C6, C7, C8, which is also the common nerve roots for the median nerve, ulnar nerve, and radial nerve. So should you inspect and find any wasting over the latissimus dorsi muscle? then that can give you a clue of the uh, le level of lesion. It can give a picture that there's a spinal involvement which is also causing the peripheral nerve weakness. So prior to examining the medial nerve or radial nerve or ulnar nerve, we have to do a basic screening. So based on the screening, as an orthopedic examination demands look, feel, move and special test. So to even perform this look, feel, move special test on either the median nerve or ulnar nerve or radial nerve, you need to pick the nerve that you want to examine first. So the, you have to perform a screening. So that screening test will give you the probable nerve which is involved for which you would do the look, feel, move special test sequence. So for median nerve, the screening for median nerve, simply ask the patient to perform an OK sign with the hands. Tip to tip. So the OK sign can be only done when the flexor digitorum profundus and the um, flexor pollicis longus muscles are functioning. These are supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve, which is a branch of the median nerve. So if the patient is not able to perform a, an OK sign, if he makes a, an incomplete OK sign like this, then you know that. You have the screening is positive for median nerve and you have to perform the look, feel, move special test sequence for median nerve. And the screening for radial nerve will be so to see if the patient can flex the metacarpal peninsular joints. Yes. So you can also immobilize such that you prevent wrist movement. Okay. And you ask the patient to flex and extend the MCP joint. For radial nerve screening, we first ask the patient to see if he can flex and extend the metacarpophalangeal joints. So you would want to immobilize because you want to make sure that he's not moving any other joint. So, okay, yeah. And also at the wrist. Okay. So flex and extend the wrist joint. Okay. So if a patient is not able to do any of these functions, for Alna nerve, see if the patient can abduct and adduct the fingers. Ask the patient to follow what you are doing. Okay. Important thing, do not ask the patient to perform this. Okay. It should be abduction and adduction. Okay. So, and see if the patient can perform an ulna deviation of the wrist joint. Can perform an ulna deviation at the wrist. So see if you can perform an ulnar deviation in the wrist. So if the patient is not able to do any, if the patient is not able to do these movements, then uh, this screening will be positive for ulnar nerve injury. So you can start doing the look, feel, moves special test sequence for ulnar nerve. When do you start with ulnar nerve examination when the screening is positive? So in case the patient is not able to abduct and adduct the fingers, or if not able to perform an ulnar deviation, then you start looking for the you start doing the look, feel, move, special test sequence for the ulnar nerve. Okay. So in inspection, first number one, you look for claw hand. So in claw hand, you look at a ring and little finger. So there's a, the patient will have a, uh, 
the patient will have the patient will have a flexed ring and little finger so the degree of flexion indicates the severity of the claw hand so when the fingers are pointing towards the ceiling this is referred to as severe claw hand and when the the fingers the the, the ring and little fingers are pointing towards the patient the opposite person it is mild claw hand so severe claw hand mild claw hand right so there's uh, an ulnar paradox so which you have to so there's an ulnar paradox so in radial nerve injury he noted that in low level lesion we get finger drop in high level lesion we get finger drop and wrist drop in very high level lesion we get finger drop wrist drop and loss of elbow extension so the general logic would tell us that the higher the level of lesion the severer the deformity but in ulnar nerve it's there there's an ulnar paradox so severe claw hand comes in low level injury low level lesion which is at a wrist level high level lesion which is in the elbow level for ulnar nerve so when the uh, fingers are pointing to the ceiling this is severe claw hand this comes in low level lesion when the um, ring and little fingers are pointing towards the patient so put it as examiner in this case will be examiner towards the examiner this will be um, high level lesion okay. so first look for the claw hand yes okay next uh, you can look for the wasting of the hypotena eminence so inspect and ask the patient to elevate and bring the palms to the level of my eyes to the line of sight and importantly do not allow the patient to keep proximity or bring the hands into contact because this can push the muscles and give a false appearance of a contour over the hypotena eminence so do not always make sure that the gap is given and you look for the contour contour of the hypotena eminence look if there's any wasting okay. then look for the guttering of the interosseous muscles so dorsal interosseous look for guttering so this is muscle atrophy why do we refer to as a guttering because it when the muscle is wasted it will resemble a gutter basically a long gang okay so it will resemble a gutter so if there's wasting you will find interosseous guttering okay and then you look for the wrist so again wrist look for any possible lesion which can cause injury to the ulnar nerve at the level of the wrist for example any lipoma any ganglion cyst any fracture deformity like a dinner fork deformity in colis fracture etc then you go to the forearm so forearm you inspect for the ulnar border of the forearm to look for wasting so wasting of the extensor and extensor carpi ulnaris and flexor carpi uh, ulnaris can cause wasting or flattening of the ulnar border of the forearm so you inspect for the ulnar border of the forearm then you go to the wrist now for the wrist you ask the patient it will be better to ask the patient to abduct okay okay so for the elbow joint we want to you can ask the patient to abduct the shoulders and you look for any pathology maybe you can get a um gun stock deformity of cubitus varus cubitus valgus and you look for any lipoma any compression which can possibly affect the nerve okay then that is done with look inspection then look feel so for palpation you palpate the muscles that we inspected for so you can palpate for the dorsal interosseous muscle so palpate and then you can palpate for the hypotena muscles and then you can palpate for the ulnar border of the forearm okay. so that's for palpation look feel move so for move is basically the screening that we did for movement so ask the patient to abduct and adduct the fingers abduct and abduct so make sure the patient doesn't do perform this okay abduct 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 and ask the patient to do ulna deviation of the wrist yes that's for move now for special test so we have the cart test which will test for the palmar interosseous the adduction which is provided by the palmar interosseous muscles so we take a card hold the card at between the fingers and try to pull and ask the patient to raise so this will check for the adduction provided by the palm interosseous okay and make sure you do it between every web space
physicist. So this is the card test. Next we have the Froman test, which is a unique test. So we ask the patient to hold the card between the thumb and the index finger. And we try to yank it, we try to pull it out. So you have to notice how the patient actually holds and resists the card. In the Froman test, we are not uh, attempting to remove the card. We are just attempting to look at how the patient actually holds onto the card. So if the ulna nerve is functioning, the ulna nerve will, uh, is the, the only tina group which supplies the ulna nerve is the adductor pollicis muscle. So adductor, ADD. In comparison to abductor which is for the median nerve, adductor pollicis will cause adduction of the thumb. So that is by the ulna nerve. So in case the ulna nerve is injured, the patient won't be able to adduct the thumb. Instead, he will be flexing the thumb. So flex. So let's just say his index, uh, his ulna nerve is injured, he will flex the thumb. This is how he will hold it. So this is how, we, this is how they attempt to hold it. So when the patient flexes, you know that he's using the help of the median nerve because the flexor policies muscles are uh, innervated by the median nerve. So this means that the Froman test is negative. When the patient flexes the thumb, you know that the Froman test is positive, meaning the ulna nerve is actually affected. With the Froman test, and do it bilaterally. So here is he having an intact ulna nerve because he's not actually flexing. Then you want to differentiate if it's the high level lesion or low level lesion. So at the end of the examination, as I said, we have to know the nerve which is involved and the level of lesion. So you want to know if it's a high level lesion or a low level lesion, right? So the point of reference that you test in ulna nerve is the dorsal aspect of the little finger. Okay. So first you standardize, you ask the patient to close the eyes and use. So in peripheral nerve examination, you want to use some thing with a sharp end like a orange an orange stick. So can you feel this? I will be touching various parts of your hands and just tell me if the sensation is the same or absent or, or reduced um, in accordance to your reference point. Okay. So can you feel this? Yes. Is the same as sensation over your forehead? Yes. Can you feel this? Is it the same as sensation over your forehead? Yes. Can you feel this? Is yes. it the same as sensation over your forehead? Can you feel this? Yes. Is it the same as sensation over your forehead? Can you feel this? Yes. Is it the same as sensation over your forehead? Yes. Can you feel this? The sensation is the same as what you felt over your forehead. Yes. So that concludes the non-effect examination. Yeah.